Dreams came true when it was announced that the quirky DS JRPG The World Ends With You was announced to be getting a sequel in the form of Neo The World Ends With You, and with modern graphics and interesting new combat and story, it seemed like it could be the chance for this series to reach its true potential on modern consoles beyond the Switch port of the original while telling a new and exciting story. I'd say this is mostly true after playing it, with sharp visuals that have its comic book style pop off the screen, as well as its pin-based battle system properly using a controller this time that boasts a chaotic but fun feeling as it encourages you to get into the groove of using it, and with a story that ties up all of its loose ends just as well as the last one with characters with a bunch of personality, it's a narrative that easily sucks you into its world as it throws out all of its twists and has you turning back the clock to save everyone again and again, and with plenty of collectibles and music to still enjoy from this bigger entry in the series, this return to Shibuya shouldn't be missed for fans of good stories in stylish worlds. Much like the original World Ends With You, Neo The World Ends With You is set in the stylish city of Shibuya, Tokyo, this time with a new protagonist to follow. The story is centered around a high schooler called Rindo, who begins the story meeting up with his friend Fred, and as they walk around talking, eating food, and partaking in the things the bustling city has to offer, on this particular day, they find themselves caught up in something strange. The Shibuya they know warps into one that looks mostly the same, but is now complete with monsters, psychic powers, and a game that is pretty different to the one Rindo plays on his phone. The game is called The Reaper's Game, where players must team up to gather points to win by taking on daily missions given by the city's reapers or face erasure. But instead of pairing up like in the first game, this time players operate in teams, with Rindo and Fret starting off with just each other, putting them at a disadvantage against bigger teams like the Varia Beauties or the Mysterious Ruin Bringers. With the odds against them, but unique characters like the Math Sprouting Minato Moto or the smartphone game obsessed Nuggy to find in their journey to help them somehow make it back to the real world, this whirlwind of a story begins with characters both new and old to get to know in this version of a famous city. Neo The World Ends With You progresses day by day following the seven day structure of the Reapers game in the original, with each day having the Reapers give the group a new mission and the winner getting a big boost in points while the rest try to avoid being lost. These missions range from fighting monsters, finding people, to sometimes even claiming areas of Shibuya as your own turf, but no matter what the objective is, you'll need to take down some of the noise monsters in the game using your trusty collection of pins to your advantage. Like the original, you start off with a few basic pins and then collect more throughout the story and its battles, with different pins tied to different psychs, ranging from ones that require you to rapidly tap a button to ones that need charging up first, with each pin being mapped to a different button, thankfully utilizing a whole controller this time, letting you quickly be able to switch between characters and attacks in a way that is easy enough to do and feels fun to try and master thanks to the skillful timing that it takes to be good at the system. Whether you know the original system or not, this new version is closer to modern action-based games, but brings in its own fitting twist thanks to its groove system. To achieve groove, you have to dish out attacks in succession as much as possible, and if the groove percentage is raised enough times by attacking with good timing, you can dish out a special attack based on your last used pin that will usually wipe the floor with whatever's left on the field. This gets more and more interesting as the game progresses, as the more buttons you're able to use, the more attacks you can try to stack, with for example having a fire blast and then doing a tap attack on top being more likely to trigger a groove raising opportunity, all while balancing the dodging and status ailments that a regular battle system would have. It does take a little getting used to since it's pretty unique, but it makes it fun to test out different pins and see what can make a better rhythm and combo, and with the sheer amount of pins in this game to collect, there are endless pin combos to try out, all backed by the standard rock and dance music you'd expect from this stylish series. What I also love was brought over from the last game is the level adjusting system where you can lower your XP to that of a lower level in exchange for more loot at the end of battle, which is essential if you want to get a good amount of money in the game for things such as feeding your characters to further raise stats or buy them threads that act as equipment, along with the fact that the difficulty you play on influences the pins that appear. I love this take on difficulty as a way to get better rewards rather than it just being about how hard the game is, and I love how they give value to the easier battles too, as even if you end up doing one 
to get a certain pin, you can at least lower the level and get a lot out of it to make it worth your while. And the fact that you can eventually chain battles together makes this a fairly quick and painless mechanic to take advantage of. It's this blend of great mechanics from the original like this and being able to unlock more interesting ones to make the journey even better thanks to new ones like the social network skill tree that makes everything come together incredibly well in Neo The World Ends With You and together makes its gameplay moments plenty of fun as the Reapers give out the various tasks you need to do while trapped in this interesting world. Expect to spend a fair bit of time in this underground Shibuya, as despite its 7 day campaign sounding short, thanks to many twists and turns, this game can clock in close to 50 hours, especially if you try to collect everything it has to offer. One of the reasons for this is its time travel element that has you often witnessing its story and then jumping back in time to fix things that went wrong that takes time, but manages to only add to the plot that keeps it from feeling repetitive. And this partner with other abilities like being able to dive into mind or remind people of things they forgot with the reminder ability makes for many great ways to keep the story always feeling involved and get you more invested in it, especially if you don't mind a variety of mechanics such as some puzzle ones. On the story itself, while I personally enjoyed the exploration elements that helped add to my satisfaction with the overall experience, what I really enjoyed was the narrative and the many plot twists and dramatic events that occurred to keep it constantly interesting. The way Rindo is fighting to make everything right despite despite the odds made it easy to root for him, and the likeable cast of old and new characters kept everything full of personality as it all played out. And whether you're in this game to catch up with the world after the previous game or just to see a good story, all the exciting moments in Neo I think are well worth playing this game for, and the fact it managed to keep from feeling repetitive in spite of its time traveling moments probably adding significantly to the hour count since it always skipped over the repetitive parts and always just added new details to help save the day or develop things to keep it interesting, it never got old, and I loved being immersed in the great lengths Rindo went to to try and make things right in this often messed up game from start to finish. Finally, I'm sure newcomers who like the look of the stylish visuals and story are wondering if they'll be able to enjoy this sequel to the first one, and while naturally those who have played the first game or even watched the anime will be able to get the most enjoyment out of this one, the story is at its core about Rindo's journey, so it's likely that most people people can get enjoyment out of this story, especially if you get into the time travel stuff. However, as someone who had played the first one and recently finished watching the anime while playing and therefore had the characters and experience from the first one very fresh in my mind, I would absolutely recommend at least watching the anime before playing if you want to have the most impactful experience the first time around. Some of my most memorable moments in Neo were seeing old characters come back, and since this series is so good at tying up loose ends, I I feel it's that little bit more satisfying to know the full story of what's going on to be able to appreciate it most, especially since this game is really good at hyping up the characters that return too. The story, atmosphere, and mechanics are fun enough regardless, but the satisfaction and emotions I felt at the end were really heightened by having engaged recently with the original, so if you have a few hours to binge the anime, I'd recommend it. But even if you don't, this experience can no doubt be fun, stylish, and interesting no matter how deep you get into it beforehand because of all the depth its time traveling aspects bring, and with it still having its hooks in me thanks to all of its collectibles and side quests to keep growing on this world, everything stands up well in this new world ends with you story. Neo The World Ends With You is a fantastic sequel to the original, rounding up the stories of beloved characters well and building on it with great new ones that make exploring its take on Shibuya a real treat once again. The time travel and exploration mechanics always kept me on my toes with its plot twists and changes that were always fascinating to watch unfold, and partnered with a battle system that is ready to keep you on your toes too with a variety of pens to play with, it's an enjoyable new take on an old system, and with so many left to pick up thanks to its unique difficulty system is the first game in a long time that has me wanting to run around and collect everything after being done with it. It's really played on its strengths in this sequel in every way, from story to sound and visuals, and with a bigger hour count to give more time to take it all in, I had so much fun discovering the new characters in this world and seeing the mysteries and clarity it added to the original. And I can only hope we see more stories from this series in future as diving into every bit of it in this high quality 
quality entry was so much fun and so impactful that I'd love to have another one of its hard-hitting stories to play through in another unique city someday. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below if you tried Neo The World Ends With You, and if you have, what did you think of it? You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below, and until next time, thank you, bye!